So when you're starting to use Hess's law, one of the first uh, things you might think about is how do you know which reactions to use to build up uh, to an overall reaction? Well, that uh, has been uh, pretty much solved by most of the time if you're uh, doing a reaction at standard states, which we'll talk about what that is in a second, uh, you can use the standard enthalpies of formation uh, to uh, build up to an overall reaction. So it turns out there's an easy uh, or, or a way to figure out what reactions you need to use. Okay? So what are standard states? Well, standard states are just at experimental conditions uh, where if you're doing a, a chemical reaction, you're going to do it at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. If you have solutions, if you have anything in solution, the concentration is going to be one molar. And if you have any, things, uh, any reactants or products in the gas phase, uh, their partial pressures are going to be um, one atmosphere. And so what this does is it uh, gives us sort of um, the experimental conditions that we can use so that we're comparing everything apples to apples. And so when we uh, see the enthalpy change, delta H, with the little degree symbol, uh, it's really the not symbol, but it uh, for the most part just looks like a, a degree symbol. That means that that reaction was carried out under standard state condition. So the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Pr partial pressures of any gases were at one atmosphere, and solution concentrations uh, were one molar. Carried out under standard state conditions. And uh, the equations that we're going to use are going to be formation reactions that are carried out under standard state. And so the enthalpy change are called the standard enthalpy changes uh, of formation, or standard enthalpies of formation. Okay. So what is this reaction? A formation reaction is a reaction that produces... one mole of a compound from its elements. And so here's an example of a standard enthalpy formation reaction uh, for producing methane. So here's our compound, methane, which is CH4. And what are the elements that make up methane? Of course, carbon and hydrogen. So you're going to produce that compound from its elements, carbon, and its lowest potential energy allotrope is graphite, but you can do pretty much just say carbon, and hydrogen, so H2, uh, because of course hydrogen is one of the seven diatomic elements. And so when we balance it, we're gonna balance that of course with two moles of hydrogen, and that's your heat of formation reaction. Now when you're uh, developing these heat of formation reactions, uh, it is important to remember that it's always going to be one mole of your compound. Okay, So here, let's write out the heat of formation reaction for, let's just say, I don't know, water. Okay, So if we're going to make water, we know that we're going to need hydrogen. And hydrogen is diatomic, so it's H2. And oxygen. And of course oxygen is also diatomic, so it's H2. Hydrogen plus oxygen, O2 produces water. Now, uh, you're seeing that this is not a balanced equation. There's two moles of oxygen on the left side, only one on the right. So you might want to sneak a two in front of water to make two oxygens on the right side. But we can't do that because we have to keep it as one mole. So instead, we're going to have to use fractional coefficients quite a bit for these. I can also balance this by multiplying oxygen by one half. And that balances the equation and keeps uh, the coefficient in front of that water molecule as one. So here's a, a table from your book that lists some uh, standard enthalpies of formation <coughs> for a variety of compounds. And so you'll use these uh, when you uh, use the Hess's type law approach to um, determine the enthalpy change for reactions. One thing that you'll notice is wherever you see an element, its heat of formation is zero, such as hydrogen which we just used. 
right? And then that's going to be the case for all elements. Every element, C to formation is zero. Delta H of formation for elements equals zero. And that's really, you know, because if you think about formation, uh, the elements are already pretty much formed. We can't make those from other elements, and so they're not a uh, standard heat of formation reaction. And so we won't have to worry about them when we're developing the uh, equations. They'll always shake out from the heat of formation reactions from the compounds. All right, so let's just practice a heat of formation reaction uh, one more time. So let's uh, make, I don't know, something like sodium carbonate. All right, so Na2CO3. So we're going to produce a, an equation that makes one mole of sodium carbonate. And so we're going to produce it from its elements. Okay, so we've got some sodium. And sodium is just a metal, so it's not diatomic or anything like that plus carbon, plus oxygen. All right, and so how are we going to um, balance this equation? Sodium needs a two, so we'll put a two there. That's pretty easy enough. Carbon's balanced, and now we need to balance oxygen. <coughs> so you might want to, you could think about maybe of all time this by three and that by two, and then backtracking uh, and um, balancing sodium and carbon again, but again, we can't uh, change coefficients of our compound, so we're going to have to use fractional coefficients. And to balance a oxygen 2 with 3, you would have to use a uh, fractional coefficient of 3 halves to balance the oxygen. And so that is the heat of formation reaction for sodium carbonate. All right, so let's use these to uh, build an overall equation and determine its enthalpy change. So let's try out this equation, for example. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna build the heat of formation reactions for all of the compounds in this equation. And then we're gonna use those equations to build this overall equation. All right, so the first one up is CH4 methane. We saw that previously, but we can write it again. CH4 in the gas phase is produced by carbon and hydrogen. And as we build these, you have to balance those, so we need two hydrogens. We can look these uh, enthalpies of formation up on the previous slide that's in your book. If you can't find them on this table, there's a bigger list in the appendix of your textbook. All right, so we're looking for CH4, that's right here, that's negative. 74.6, negative 74.6. All right, and um, next we're going to go after CO2. We're going to skip all the elements. So we need our heat of formation reaction for CO2. So we're going to make one mole of CO2. And we're going to make it from carbon and oxygen. And if you look at that, that, uh, that seems to be balanced. So that's all we're going to need to do for that. Now we just need to look up the heat of formation reaction for carbon dioxide, and it is negative 393.5. Finally, we're going to determine, uh, or we're going to build, rather, the heat of formation reaction for water. So we're going to make one mole of water. This is in the gas phase from hydrogen and oxygen. And just like we did before, we'll have to use a fractional coefficient to balance the oxygen. Now for some substances, especially common ones like water, you'll see them in multiple phases. So here we have heat of formation reactions for water in the gas phase and the liquid phase. So be careful to choose the correct heat of formation uh, enthalpy change value. This is negative 241. Alright, so now that we've uh, written out our heat of formation reactions, we can use them to build our overall equation, which is, of course, up here. So, I'm going to need some CH4. 
So here I've got CH4. It's a product. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to flip it. And so that's going to give me CH4 produces carbon solid plus two hydrogens. Then I'm also going to need to flip this. So that will, the enthalpy change. That will become set plus 740, 74.6. These units, of course, are kilotons. Now I need uh, oxygen we're going to skip, so I need some CO2. Here's some CO2. I've got our product. Um, it's one mole, so I really don't need to do anything with it. I'm just going to use it as is. So it's going to be carbon plus oxygen uh, produces one mole of CO2. And I'm just going to use the heat of formation enthalpy change as is, so I don't need to do anything to it. All right, and so now I just need to find some water. That's in my third equation. Uh, it's also a product, so that's good, but I do need two moles of it. So I'm going to need to multiply that second equation by two. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to multiply it by two. And that will give me two hydrogens plus two times one half is one oxygen. And that's going to produce two moles of water. Then I'm also going to need to multiply that negative 241.8 times 2. So that will give me a negative 483.6. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these equations and add them up. And if they add up and equal to my overall equation, I can just add up my enthalpy changes, and that will be my enthalpy change for that overall equation. So I've got a methane, and that's it. So that's going to be one mole of methane, plus, I've got a carbon over here, but that carbon cancels out with the one in green. We've got one mole of oxygen and two moles of oxygen. No moles of oxygen on the right side, so that's they're both going to stay. Two moles of oxygen produce uh, one. Uh, well, the 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 hydrogen is going to cancel out, so I am going to be talking about products now. One mole of CO2 and two moles of water. Neither of those cancel out. Alright, and if we compare this to uh, my overall reaction that I wanted, it looks to be the same, and so now I can just add up my enthalpy changes. So I'm going to take my positive 74.6 plus the negative 393.5 plus negative 483.6, and I get negative 802.5, and that will have to be negative 803 kilojoules. Uh, with 